Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, Inkbird. Yes, Inkbird sent me these. They're ITC 308 temperature controllers. They're awesome. I have a ton. I use a ton of Inkbird products, primarily ITC 308s. We're gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna go over the features and I'm gonna show you how to set one up if you've never set one up. It can look a little scary the first time you see it if you're not into technology, but it's super easy, super reliable, uh, right out of the box, plug and play, no big deal. I'm gonna go over maybe some terminology you're not familiar with and you're gonna be a little concerned when you first hear it, but it's okay. I'll even tell you where to get a cheat sheet to make life super easy, which technically it's in the box, but I'll, I'll tell you a place you can get a bigger version, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna take these four, we're gonna slide them out of the way and I'm gonna bring just one because we only need to talk about one. So yes, it's an ITC 308. It is the go-to when you're doing things like home brewing, even for people who are doing fermentations, for say kombucha or wine or yogurt or mushrooms, or maybe they've got incubation they're doing, you know, they're trying to hatch some eggs, whether it's reptiles or birds, you know, aquariums, anything like that. Or they're just trying to keep, you know, somebody in the house comfortable by having heat kick on or off and it's a little heater or something like that. Yeah, these bad boys are awesome, awesome. Few features I want to go over just to make sure you're aware of. And of course, Inkbird wanted to make sure you're aware before you go out and you know say, hey, I need to buy some of these. And yeah, they're very affordable. They're great products. Like I have this little thing here, it says temperature control. That's what this container is. I just should call it Inkbird because it's full of Inkbird temperature controllers <laughs> that are currently not in use. I have a ton of them in use. I have about like 20 Inkbird products and the majority of them are ITC 308s just because they're affordable, they're reliable, and they do a great job. The big key is precise temperature control. And if you're brewing beer, temperature control is everything. And I do mean everything. You can brew and mess up, but if you can get that batch fermented at the correct temperature and maintain that temperature with something like a Inkbird, it still will come out as a great beer. Might not be the beer you meant it to be, but it'll be a great beer. Might be better. You know what I'm saying? Temperature range. What is the temperature range? Well, if for everybody not in the US, Celsius, 50, negative 50 to 120 degrees Celsius. Fahrenheit is 50, negative 58 all the way up to 248 Fahrenheit. I thought it was a little lower, but that's what their recent information provided. Also, how, what's the resolution? 0.1 Celsius or 0.1 Fahrenheit, and plus or minus one in accuracy for Celsius or Fahrenheit. As you get up into the real high temperature Fahrenheit, you can get plus or minus two Fahrenheit, you know, getting way up there and it's so granular. So it's just the way it is. Excellent protection for what? Compressors, yes. This thing has a delay protection for your compressor. Out of the box, it's set for three minutes. You will want to look, if you're doing something like a keyser where you have a compressor on that freezer that you're controlling the temp, you will want to look at the manual and see what it recommends. If it says five minutes, you can change it to five minutes. I do not remember the range. I think, oh, 10 minutes. I think it's zero to 10 minutes. So you can set no delay all the way up to 10 minutes. I use no delay for certain things and I keep the three minute default for things like my keyser. So that's something to be aware of. It has an alarm, which I knew about the alarm for the high and low. So you can say, you know what? Here's my fermentation temperature. Here's my, you know, where I want the heat to kick on or the cold to kick on. But if it gets anywhere up here for whatever reason, send me an alarm. Same thing, you can go down here. So you have a low and a high alarm, but it also has things for like abnormal performance or out of range or short circuit, you'll get an alarm. I did not know that until I read the manual. I was like, hmm, those are new. I didn't know that. <laughs> it has heating and cooling settings, of course. You can switch it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And while we're on that subject, something I did not know is that it has four different plugs available based on the model you buy. Here in the US, we just have the standard little plugs, looks like this, nothing special. But there is a UK, there is a European Union, and there is an Australian plug configuration based on those areas. And we also know that most of those areas are on 220 to 240. Well, here in the US, we're on 110, 120, and you know, we use the same plug for everything on that voltage, so it's not a big deal. But that's something to be aware of. Temperature display, yeah. 
I just need to unbox this and show you. So let's just go ahead and unbox it, okay? And I have a camera overhead, so hopefully you'll get a good view on everything here. I'm gonna pop this thing open. And the first thing you're gonna see when you open this box is the manual. Yes, that's right, the manual. Boom, it's right there. I'm gonna tell you, if you have great eyesight, this will serve you just fine. If not, go to the internet, go to Inkbird, and you can download the latest manual in large print <laughs> for people like me. It makes it so much easier to read, okay? Comes packaged all beautiful like this. You take it out of the box and yeah, there's a piece of cardboard separating the cords. You've got your NTC temperature probe, extremely, extremely accurate compared to a lot of other temperature probes you could have. You have two meters or six feet power cord here. And then I think that's about a foot, foot and a half. Um, what is that? In meters, I guess that's 0.3, something like that. But as you can see, and I, like I said, with the camera above, you have a cooling and heating. So you can plug anything that does with cooling and anything for heating. And yes, you can always put two plugs. There are limitations to how much on the voltage and the amperage. Each one can handle up to 10 amps at a time and you're only doing 10 amps total because you can only do heating or cooling. You, didn't wanna, you don't wanna do both at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, heating or cooling and I'll go over the voltage, things like that. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, brand new, right out of the box. I'm gonna set that aside because I already have one plugged in and we're gonna go over that one and you're gonna to wanna to keep watching the videos about Inkbird, trust me on that one. So, cause they sent me quite a few, just a little hint there. But here is an Inkbird running, plugged in, ready to go. It's got this little probe right here. Like I said, it's like a six foot, it's probably longer than six feet, but it's over two meters or approximately two meters, a little NTC probe. Nice little, I believe it's a type of stainless, might not be, but yeah, nice, solid, beautiful. And I'm gonna set this down and we're gonna get the cord up here because it's gonna be a mess otherwise. And I'm gonna go over a few things. I want to grab a couple things out of the manual that I happen to see. So things like I said, plug and play design, yeah. But the one I keep forgetting was that your wattage. That's what some people are gonna to wanna to know. If you're anywhere but in the US and you're running on the 220 to 240, you can go up to 2200 watts, okay? Up to 10 amps. And in the US, we're up to 1200 watts at 110, 120. And that's just something to be aware of. You got the dual display, as you can see. You have temperature calibration, which is something I had forgotten it could do, which is kind of cool. I will tell you from what I understand is that it actually comes pre-calibrated. So you shouldn't need to calibrate it. I've heard people say four months, six months. If you want to check it, you can. My expectation is if it's gonna be off, it's gonna be such a tiny amount that I'm probably only gonna check it about once a year. I've got so many other things I need to deal with, but yeah, not anything to really worry about. A lot of the settings I've already gone over for heating and cooling, the different types of sockets. And then this is one of the pictures I wanted to show you. And I'll show you on the camera overhead and I'll show you right here. This is great for people who are what I call technology challenged or it's just brand new to you and you feel a little overwhelmed. It's got little numbers and a diagram and it tells you what every single thing is and what it's for. And I know some of you out there are like, I don't want it. Yeah, it comes easy to some people and it doesn't to others. I'm an IT person, so I understand. But I get overwhelmed sometimes with the amount of technology and information coming at me all at one time or something maybe I'm not as familiar with. So like PV, that's the top. What does PV mean? Process value. What does that mean? Yeah, well, process value is the current temperature. So from the overhead camera, you can see it's currently at 73.7 Fahrenheit. And my SV is my set value or set temperature. That one's a little bit more obvious. You have a cooling light, which right now is lit up. You have a heating light, which is not, because currently this system is trying to cool things down because I have the temperature set at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but the actual probe is reading 73.4. And if I put it in my hand, I can probably get it all the way up close to 98.6. <laughs> but I'm holding it in my hand here and yep, there it goes 74.5, 75.7, 77.3. Yeah, it's, it's going up because it's getting warm. And now I have an alarm because I set that alarm at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And because of that, yeah. Now it's going to alert and annoy everybody. Okay, sorry about that 80 degree alarm. I forgot I set it so low, but yeah. It's that awesome. It'll just start beeping and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a problem. And you can, you know, figure out what's going on. But 
Needless to say, if you go into the manual, you download it, or you want to read the smaller one if you have really great eyesight, there is a flow chart a flow chart on how to configure this thing. It's that easy and I'm gonna go over it. So it tells you, and I'm gonna do from the up camera so you can see it up there. We have our process value, which you can also think of probe value, whatever the temperature the probe says it is. And then you have your set value, which is your SV. So I'm gonna hold the set. It says three seconds or longer. I'm gonna tell you it's five. There you go. At five seconds, you get a TS. That is your temperature set. What is it set to? Well, mine's set to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I can go up and down. If you ignore it for two seconds or longer, it will go back to factory. If you want to save what you've done, you will have to hold it down for five seconds. It will click and everything will be saved. So the first item on the flow chart is your temperature set. Ours is at 68. How do I get to the next screen? I hit set. Boom. I'm on HD, heating differential. The best way about think about heating differential is it's heat. So if I set it to two degrees differential, that means that if I'm at 70 and it goes down to 68, my heat's gonna kick on to get it back up to 70. I hit set again, I'm on CD. Yeah, cold differential. So same thing. If I go up from my set, say I set it at 70 and I go up to 72, up, oh, we gotta cool down. It's gonna bring it back down because I hit that two degree differential. That's all, it's the difference. Two degrees difference in one way or the other. You just have to think a little backwards. You know, you're going to apply cold because it got warmer by two degrees, or you're going to apply heat because it got colder by two degrees, or whatever the settings are that you set. Three degrees is the factory out of the box. So now I hit set again, and now I'm on AH. That is your alarm high. That was my 80 degrees. So my alarm high is at 80 degrees. If I hit 80 degrees or higher, the alarm will start sounding. If I hit it again, the set, I have alarm low. Same thing, if my temperature, I have it at 52 Fahrenheit right now. If I get 52 degrees, my alarm's gonna go off and say, hey, things are getting too cold for fermentation. You might wanna crank that back up before you cold crash it. So bring that back down. I hit set again, and now we have PT. PT, I know, it doesn't always make sense, but this is your compressor delay. So this is a, like a, a pause. Think of it, PT is a pause, okay? And it's a timer, so it's PT. So I set mine to zero because this is for a pump pulling from glycol into a glycol chilling system. Now on my keyser, I have it set for three minutes, which is the factory default for this thing. And mine recommended at least two minute delay. So three minutes is great. Well, this goes up to 10. So I can have up to a 10 minute delay for the compressor. Check whatever you're doing to make sure you're good. CA. Mine is currently set to 0, 0.0. That is calibration. You should not have to do that out of the box. If you're OCD, go for it, but you should not have to do it. Now see, I let it sit for more than two seconds, so mine's reset. Easy. I hold it down. Now if I change something, I'd have to go back and change it again because I was too busy talking and not doing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go through here, we're back to PT, and now we're at calibration. I hit it again, and I got F. If I go up or down, I go between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And I go back to Fahrenheit, I hit it again, it's gonna keep cycling. It will continually cycle. So how do I get it to save whatever I did? I hold it for about five seconds, click, it makes a little click sound, and I'm done. That's it. And somehow I set it to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's okay, I'll fix it later. But yeah, it's that easy. It's super, super simple to configure, super easy. You have the long probe, which gets all tangled up if you're not paying attention. It shouldn't, it's only three cords, you know what I'm saying? Not like a Rubik's Cube. So your probe, plenty of length. If you have a thermal well, yeah. I feed them into thermal wells all the time, no problem. You have your reading here that you can see. You can just use cooling, or you can just use heat, or you can use both. So if, you know, you're, let's say you're fermenting in your garage and your garage gets up to around 80 degrees during the day and 50 at night, you're gonna wanna use heating and cooling. If your garage is air conditioned or temperature stable, like a basement, you should be able to get away with just one or you can do both. Other cool thing that you don't realize is that, yeah, there's little places for hooks. So if you have screws, you can hang this up on the wall, you can hang this on the wall and yeah, my one for my keyser, this is hanging up. This is not, it's hanging down. I didn't feel it was necessary to do the next one, but yeah. Okay, here's a quick example. 
Like over here, Blickman, Glycol, choosing an, an Inkbird STC 1000. But for me, for the pump, I'm using an Inkbird ITC 308. Basically what this is doing is I have a cool set. I don't even use the heat, I'm just having cool. And whenever it needs to cool it down, it turns the pump on, the pump runs the glycol, the glycol goes through the glycol chiller inside of the fermenter, and it cools the temperature back down to, well, currently I have it set to 69 degrees, and currently it's at 67.9, which means it ran just a little bit ago, because I have a two degree differential. Yeah. Okay, this is my eight tap keyser, and guess what you see back there? I got an ink bird running my keyser. That thing is probably at least five years old. I haven't had a single problem. Works great, does a great job. I also have a little uh, IBS M1 sitting back there. So yeah, Inkbird pretty much keeps uh, my temperatures just perfect. Inkbird, super easy to use. Come on. Affordable, does a great job, reliable, been around for years. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate you. And thank you, huge thank you going out to Inkbird. Appreciate you.